Uh, my name is Ron Schwanger. I'm the principal at Rope and Cable Canada. We're uh, headquartered out of Vancouver, British Columbia, but we're happy to be here in Toronto. This is my colleague, Jeff McCluskey. He is the uh, technical ex expert in uh, stainless steel for our, our, our stainless steel division. So he'll be here to answer any questions you have. I encourage, I don't want this to be a monologue, so I I encourage any questions during the presentation, if we come across something and you, you have a question pertaining to what we're talking about, uh, please feel free to raise your hand and, and Jeff will try to answer the question the best, best way he can. Uh, to get started, I just wanted to give you a really brief history of, of who we are and, and how uh, we got to where we are. Uh, Jacob, uh, first of all, is a 110-year-old company out of Switzerland, uh, just outside of Bern, Switzerland. They've been in the high-end uh, stainless steel cable business for architecture and infrastructure for 110 years. Our company, our founding company, is a company by the name of Architect, Architect Sustainable Building Products. And we originally started in 2005. I started it uh, as a company specializing in sustainable products for the building envelope or for, the, for, for buildings, and we morphed into a living building systems company. We started with Jacob in 2010 doing green facades in Western Canada. Uh, since then, the uh, CEO has asked us to become the distributor for Canada and handle their entire product line, which encompasses... Uh, other aspects associated with, with uh, stainless steel that, that isn't green. And that's why we started Rope and Cable Canada. So Rope and Cable Canada is the result of Jacob and Architect getting together. So it's a separate entity altogether. What we're here to today is just to give you a little bit of an introduction to Jacob's product line and how it works and what we do and how we can support you in designing uh, stainless steel cable and stainless steel uh, into your architectural facades, railings, and all kinds of other applications. So uh, the first thing I think that that's important is not all stainless steel is the same. Not all stainless steel is equal. Uh, the stainless steel that Jacob uses is, is uncompromising. It's uh, AISI 316 stainless steel. And what that means is that means that if it's close to salt water or if it's exposed to the elements, it won't corrode and it won't let you down. So it's important to, to notice that there, note that there are different uh, grades of stainless steel that behave differently in the elements. And uh, it's good when you are a specification writer to recognize the differences and make sure that, that uh, the, the better quality stainless steel is, is what's being specified. So from Jacob's perspective, uh, the components are really quite simple, and those simple components turn into very elaborate installations. And we'll uh, get into the installations examples a little, bit, a little bit later. But to get started, the components consist of four uh, elements. Uh, the basic cable itself, the hardware, that goes with the cable and and there are literally thousands of pieces of terminating uh, uh, precision machined uh, components that get attached to the cable and attached to a building or attached to a component uh, and uh, so there's a we will find a solution for whatever application you have the third component uh, is something called web netting, which is essentially a lightweight or medium weight stainless steel cable that's woven together to create a net. And that's used for a number of applications, which we can get into a little bit later, uh, including infills and safety, various other things. And then the fourth component is taking the, that web netting and actually pre-installing it into a frame. Uh, that can be used for a number of applications, predominantly railing infills. So uh, we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, our our theme really is endless possibilities. If you come down to the trade show floor to booth number five twenty five, uh, you'll recognize this image. It's on the backdrop of our trade show exhibit, and it really does say what we're all about uh, is as simple and as basic as stainless steel cable and components really are it's really quite astounding what you can do with it 
So here's a little laundry list of what some of those endless design possibilities are. The most popular being uh, cable railing systems for safety guard rails and other types of guard rails. Uh, that they comes in, in, in vertical or horizontal cable. In addition to that, we can use the web net for railing infills. Uh, there are green solutions, which is the part of the business that we started with. Uh, trellises and facades. Is uh, anybody here familiar with the new Bjark Engels BIG design on King Street, the development on King Street? Uh, we're working with them to design uh, a climbing vine infrastructure on the side of glass block, which is a part of that building. Cantonary lighting has become incredibly uh, popular in commercial applications, both for cities and for, for developments. Architectural facades, a lot of parkades and a lot of buildings that have unsightly facades, we, we put in stainless steel to, to make those facades a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Structural cable uh, of, any, of, of many sorts, uh, holding up canopies, structural cable that supports various other elements. Bridge safety, uh, which includes railing infrastructure and, and uh, anti-suicide uh, below deck netting zoo enclosures, and art installations. Uh, we're going to be involved in, in a really interesting uh, art installation on the lake frontier where we're, we're actually mitigating wind and, and creating a kinetic uh, art installation at the same time. So when, when we look at cable, the stainless steel cable, there's, there's, there's a form side to it and there's a functional side to it. And I think the two work together very well. Here are some examples of the frame web net used in a railing infill type of application. And it comes complete with all of the hardware. And again, if you have any questions, let me know and let Jeff can answer those for you. Uh, cable railing installations. Has anybody here been to New York and been on the High Line in New York? That uh, picture on the top right is, is actually part of the, the High Line in, in, in New York City. Uh, here are some other examples of hardware used in a uh, handrail and railing application, both for web netting and for vertical and horizontal uh, stainless steel cable. This is being used extensively now in residential and commercial architecture. It's, it's, it's really become quite trendy. Uh, some other examples of uh, uh, hard, uh, terminating hardware that's used in a staircase or stair stairwell application where there's an angle and you can create infinite angles uh, with that terminating hardware there. And some other examples here of web netting uh, used uh, in an architectural element uh, in a staircase. And again, if you have any questions or anything, if, if I'm going over it too quickly, by all means, stop me. Yes, go ahead. So all the framework here, it's all stainless steel. Yes, AI. AI. There was a requirement to get the framing itself in, let's say, black. Yeah, absolutely. So everything that we make um, can be colored as well. We have a, a couple of different options. Um, we can use any of the RAL colors that are available. Um, it really depends on what application it's going to be used for as to how we color it, whether it's a, an anodized coloring system or uh, like a powder coating system. There's, there's quite a few different options we can, we can do, but usually it depends on how it's going to be displayed as to which option we suggest. So all of our materials is either made in our Switzerland factory or our Vietnam factory, depending on what it is. And then we ship it to a separate factory that only specializes in um, coating stainless steel in Germany. Great, great question, thank you. Uh, so we'll continue on, and again, please feel free to ask any questions. So from a, a functional standpoint uh, and an aesthetic standpoint, uh, web netting is used for fall safety, and, and uh, it's used in some of the most sensitive uh, buildings. Uh, I don't think there's anything more aesthetically sensitive than the Eiffel Tower, yet they were able to put this... Uh, stainless steel netting in as a fall safe measure without uh, uh, interrupting or, or disrupting the, the aesthetic of, of a building so as, as, as important as the Eiffel Tower. And uh, we're, we're finding that quite often. 
lots of interesting applications for uh, parkade facades, uh, creating safety, and also using web netting as a safety guardrail in a floor to ceiling application. Uh, we can help you with code. Uh, I don't know if anyone here is familiar with the climbability uh, clause in the building code, but uh, it requires that uh, railing infills can't be climbable when they're used as a safety guardrail. So we have answers to pretty much all of that. In most cases, the infill has to be a very small aperture web net so that uh, it's deemed by the code consultant as being non-climbable. So. Um, the case, some of the, uh, the the image that you showed about the high line. Yes. Over there, it's it's horizontal. Yeah, that's in the United States. Um, however, Jeff can address that. Yeah, in in BC building codes changing in December. Um, and the and, Canada uh, building code. Yeah. And the Canada building code, so you can have horizontal cabling. Um, it requires the same as as vertical cabling that it can't be spaced any further than uh, four inches apart. Um, but there is still a drop requirement in the, the Canada Building Code that I believe it's over two and a half floors. You can no longer use it as a horizontal. Um, yeah, so with that as well, um, it will also depend on the type of cable we're using as to the spacing we have, because all cables have a certain amount of deflection. So we can give you all that information. A lot of it comes down to what you're attaching the cable to as to what we'll suggest you use. And do the cables over time uh, get some amount of um, uh, slag to it? it? Like anything, all buildings move. Um, so there, there is, we suggest, um, depending on the system, that uh, when you are attaching the hardware that you use something like a Loctite or, or, or something to, to make sure it doesn't loosen over time. Um, we can also pre-stress the cables as well so that they don't have as much elasticity in them and they'll, they'll stay tighter. Um, yeah, there's, there's tons of different ways. Or to the use that. of turnbuckles. And, and when we use turnbuckles, then they can be adjusted and, and taken care of during regular maintenance. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Uh, so here's, here's some examples of uh, fall safety netting being used on bridges. There are more and more bridges now uh, that are putting in anti-suicide measures. Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge now in the in San Francisco is having this installed. Uh, different bridge applications use different approaches. The nice thing about uh, below bridge platform netting is it really has been proven to be the most effective for sober second thought because it's not a matter of trying to get over a barrier and then being beyond that. If even if you get over the fence or the barrier that's on the bridge deck, you're going to fall into a net. And so uh, they found that this is the most effective deterrent uh, for, for bridge safety uh, when it comes to, to people that have a tendency to, to, to jump. So uh, we've done a lot of projects in, in, in Alberta, and, and we're working on another one here for uh, animal enclosures. Uh, web netting is used quite effectively uh, uh, for animal enclosures in in uh, in those kinds of environments. Again, structural cable, uh, it's really a matter of imagination and how you use it. Uh, we recently did a very interesting project in Calgary at the new Calgary Library. Uh, they have a large, very expansive skylight at the top of the library and they put in a series of what look like sails. Uh, cloth or, or, or um, textile sails that cut down some of the light that's coming in through the skylight and keep keeping the in, inside a little cooler. And those sails uh, are stretched in between cables, uh, much much like the sails of a sailboat are, are but they're they're tensioned and, and kept taut using cables. Um, Here's a number of different applications using vertical cable and web netting in a facade environment. Uh, I'll show you a, another image a little bit later, but we're just finishing up a project in Kamloops, which was an older five-story parkade that was rather unsightly. And we've installed web netting on three of the uh, five-story elevations. And now a local artist is using uh, colored aluminum pixels and creating a pixelated uh, mural 
on that uh, on that facade, and I'll I'll show you some pictures of it there. So what's that material there? It's Where it's that's that? that's those are actually stainless steel plate that are attached to the web netting to create a pixelated image that you see. And they come in various shapes and and and, uh, and sizes. And of course, uh, we also have the ability to take those facades and turn them into green. That's how we started in this business in the first place, is, is applying cables to facades that support uh, climbing vines. So with the climbing vines, um, a lot of people ask us, do you have like a, a plug and play kit that we can just specify on anything? Uh, we don't usually believe in doing that. We do have kits that we can provide you, but we think that every situation, depending on the amount of coverage you wanna have and the type of connections you have, should be really um, designed for that application. We also, at that point in time, have the ability to, to find out what your client's budget is and design a system that's gonna work into their budget. Um, sometimes it's as easy as doing vertical cables and, and using a horizontal rod instead of a cable where you don't need a, a support to attach back to the building. Um, sometimes you want more coverage, so we need a, a smaller spacing between cable. All that stuff is completely customizable um, so, so we look forward to working with you guys any way we can. And so I, that's a perfect segue to the next slide. Um, we uh, aren't just a distributor of products. We're a full design build company. So we support uh, general contractors, developers, and, uh, and the design community, uh, architects, landscape architects, and engineers, uh, right from the get-go. Uh, we deal with detailing and design, and we provide full detailed shop drawings for most of our projects. This is a, a set of shop drawings. This is just an example of the type of shop drawings you would get for us in supporting your project. Uh, this was a green web net facade that was installed on the outside of a, of a reservoir. The reservoir was like a great big concrete warehouse that was literally filled with water near a residential area in Victoria. And because uh, the outside concrete walls weren't that aesthetically pleasing to the neighbors. We installed this web netting, which was eventually uh, uh, populated with vines. Uh, so it, it created a, a, a green environment. In addition to that, uh, we're, uh, we have a network of certified installers. On our website, there are installation videos that show you how to install it, uh, whatever the application may be. So again, to reiterate, we, we are a full service company beyond just providing uh, the, the stainless steel hardware through Jacob. We get involved in, in, at the conceptual uh, design stage. We provide detail, uh, detailing, shop drawings. We provide detailed quotes. We supply the material. And in addition to that, we have install crews available to install it. So it's, it's really quite uh, full service when it comes to that. So don't ever hesitate to, to let us know what you need. We'll solve the problem. We're working on a, a huge uh, pro, uh, um, parkade project in, in Alberta right now that where the entire elevation of the outside of the building uh, relies on web netting for its aesthetic. Uh, it looks a bit like a circus tent around, if you can imagine, a circus tent that enshrouds a, a five or six story parkade building uh, and the building's hidden, well, semi-transparent, but behind a stainless steel web net that looks like a circus tent. So it's, it, uh, the architect uh, wanted to, to make something that was interesting. Um, there are some really incredible uh, uh, art installations that are kinetic in nature that we've been involved in. Uh, we're going to be involved in one that's really unique with this artist. His name is Ned Kahn. And uh, there's a couple of towers that are being built on the lakefront. And one of the issues they have at the lakefront is the wind. Is there, I guess there's some pretty cold winds that, uh, that come off of Lake Ontario. And they have a, uh, a corridor in between the two buildings that they want to use for cafes and and for activity. And so originally they felt that to mitigate the wind, they were gonna put a glass canopy over on top of this, this uh, usable area in between these two towers. But they felt the glass canopy would be too hard to maintain and there was snow loads involved and all kinds of other issues. 
So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing something similar to this as a kinetic canopy over the entire uh, corridor in between two buildings, which will mitigate the wind coming down into the corridor and at the same time make an interesting sound and make ripple effects for the people that are looking down on it that looks, looks like the ripples in the water. So again, simple cable and you can do some pretty interesting things. Uh, this is a, a fairly basic cable web net installation that we did in Valcartier, Quebec. Uh, Cantonary lighting is really an amazing thing. You can't just string a string of lights in a commercial application on the wire itself. You need to support the wire with uh, some structural cable. So this is an example in uh, Australia of a beautiful cantonary lighting application. This is one that we did. Uh, there's a, a, a small uh, city uh, outside of Vancouver called New Westminster on the river. And it's an older city that, that that's at one time saw better days and they're rebuilding re, uh, it and redoing it. And the back side of the main street, they're recreating a, an entire neighborhood. And the cantonary lighting kind of does a, a really good job in defining what that neighborhood is and, and, and creating a little bit of uh, atmosphere. This is an example of a trellis system uh, when it's mature. This was a, a four-story or three-story building that just had brick facade all around it that was essentially a transformer building for BC Hydro in the middle of Vancouver. And they needed to, to do something to, to beautify the outside of the building. And so we installed that, and that's the clematis uh, in June and July. That's what it looks like. Again, uh, this is what the facades look like. That was an interesting pixelated facade in Switzerland uh, for a hotel. This is that project I just told you about in Kamloops. It's a uh, five-story building. We did, we, we've installed the web net. This is a rendering. We've installed the web net now, and the artist is in the process of attaching uh, uh, painted and anodized colored pixels that will create that mural and it's going to beautify that building and completely change its its outside elevation of facade. By the way, the silver area, uh, the theme in Kamloops is three rivers, and the silver area is supposed to indicate a river, and the pixels that are on the river are actually attached with at a pin, uh, so when the, when the wind hits it, they actually move and shimmer. And this now is the uh, the project I was just telling you about in Toronto on the lakefront. So this is now that this is the canopy and what the canopy will look like in between the two buildings, <coughs> mitigating the wind and reducing the wind that comes in from the, the lake and creating an interesting visual image and also an audio. There'll be some audio uh, when, that you'll hear a little bit when when those. Flap, we call them flappers. When, they, when they're moving from the wind, you'll hear something. So that's essentially what it looks like and what it'll, what it'll appear as. So it's, pardon me? They have no, a bearing they, in it that only allows it to They go, just go so back and forth. They have the counterweight. Oh, so it doesn't go up? No. No. No, there's uh, actually... A little bit further forward in this video, that they, they start to show you what it'll look like from underneath. That's what it'll look like from above. I think uh, I'm trying to show you. Yeah. Um, I think it was back here, maybe. Uh, where was that? There. That's what it'll look like when you're underneath it. So, basic stainless steel cable used in a very imaginative way. <laughs> And none of these components uh, existed in the catalog. When the artist came to us, he asked us if it was possible to do this. So we went to our engineers in Switzerland and custom made these parts for him. Yeah. Uh, so we have about 10,000 different components in our catalogs, but we have about another 20,000 components that we've made for specific applications. Um, all of the testing is done in our factory in Switzerland by their engineers. <laughs> and we, we really stress like, we carry probably a hundred different types of strands of cable, depending on what it needs to be made out of, whether we're doing a continuous loop or whether it needs to have some sort of stretch for uh, lifting capabilities. We can really do it all. Here's some other examples of bridge safety. This, the upper right-hand side is a spectacularly beautiful bridge in Sydney, Australia. 
or actually that's in Brisbane, pardon me, uh, through our colleague, uh, the, uh, Peter from Tensile Group. But uh, it really is uh, beautiful to work with. It's very transparent. It's extremely durable. Uh, it'll last, outlast most of us here. Uh, so it, it's, it, we're, we're very pleased and we're very proud to, to work with it. And we encourage, if you have a project, if you have an idea, if you have a concept, please contact Jeff uh, and he'll work with you uh, in making it happen uh, and, and, and deal with the details. So I, I really thank you.